Randy Marsh. Has a character in TV history ever undergone a transformation like Randy? Over the course of 23 seasons of South Park, Randy has gone from a simple father and geologist to an obsessive weed farmer who literally caused the ongoing pandemic. A truly wild evolution. But honestly, if you follow Randy's journey over these 23 seasons, the funny thing is that this development actually feels really natural and earned. He didn't just become an obsessive oaf one day, they slowly introduced certain quirks to Randy's personality and those quirks evolved and developed over time. Randy went from being a moderately utilized secondary character to arguably the star of the entire show. And while there are some people who take exception to Randy's presence at the forefront of South Park these days, I think the journey itself is a fascinating one. So let's comb over 23 seasons worth of the man with absolutely no integrity and explore the evolution of Randy Marsh. Oh, hey, f you. Johnny, that cartoon just cursed. Tariq, we did this bit on my last video. So, talk about the podcast. <sighs> Cartoons That Curse is a podcast I host with my good friend Toon Rev Tariq where we talk about all of our favorite adult animated series one season at a time. We've been talking about Futurama and we'll probably be talking about South Park at some point. So make sure to check it out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google, or watch the video version here on YouTube. Thank you. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'll drink a few more beers and see where the party takes me. Randy's first appearance comes in the third episode of the series, Volcano, though it wasn't yet revealed that he is Stan's dad. He's introduced as the town geologist who ultimately saves the town from an erupting volcano. All things considered, he's a pretty normal and competent dude in this first appearance. He alerts the mayor about the volcano eruption, finds a solution, and executes it. Although, he does burn down Denver in the process. While Randy is present in many episodes of South Park over the first eight seasons or so, there are really only a handful of episodes that bring Randy to the forefront of the conflict, and often that is through his son Stan. That being said, they do start to set up some traits that end up defining Randy pretty substantially later on. In episode 212 Clubhouses, Randy and Sharon decide to get a divorce after fighting incessantly. Don't interrupt me. You always interrupt me when I talk. Can't you see that I, I don't interrupt you? This isn't really portrayed as anything overly dramatic. It's most played for laughs, exaggerating the types of things that happen when a couple gets divorced. We see Sharon immediately move on to a new man, while Randy gets a nice new convertible and starts partying, quickly taking to single life, but this is mostly portrayed from Stan's point of view. While the episode is mostly parodying the effects of divorce, this would be sort of a small hint at Randy's obsessive personality that would be showcased later. In the end, the two of them of course get back together. In 302's spontaneous combustion, we start to see a sort of proto-Randy, a solid example of some things that the show would start to do with Randy later on, though it's still Still not a huge focus. When citizens of South Park start to spontaneously combust, Randy is tasked with finding out why, since he's apparently the town's only scientist. The sequences where Randy is doing research are pretty classic. They just show him mixing random chemicals in the basement while he brainstorms. That's pretty classic. I said that already. But funny enough, Randy does figure out what's causing the spontaneous combustion. <laughs> Kenny combusted because he held his farts in for too long. You mean all we have to do is fart and we won't explode? Exactly. And he literally wins a Nobel Prize for this discovery and solution, which he is then stripped of when the farting solution causes way more problems than it solves. On paper, pretty classic Randy. In execution, relatively subdued compared to what we've gotten used to. 308's Two Guys Naked in a Hot Tub is a really funny episode, but honestly, it starts to explore Randy's fears and regrets in ways the show hadn't yet. Randy actually laments his lack of freedom that comes with his life as a family man. I love having a family and all. I just miss being able to party, drinking and socializing, and experimenting with all kinds of different things. I'll touch more on this aspect of Randy's fears later because for now it's mostly used as an entry point for Randy to, uh, all right, what's the monetization friendly way to say this? pleasure himself in front of Gerald, and then get really insecure that somebody's going to find out. 408 Something You Can Do With Your Finger feels like a really good early example of some of Randy's weirder quirks and interests being revealed. Randy is absolutely furious that Stan is in a boy band, and his attitude towards the whole thing is really funny. It feels like they were starting to feel out a lot of the fun traits that they could roll with later in the show for Randy. We learned that when Randy was 18 years old, he too was in a boy band, Ghetto Avenue Boys, and he was wildly successful for a year of his life. Unfortunately, the music industry spit him out as quickly as it ate him up. Because all the fame, the money, the women, all it did was build me up so that I could be knocked down harder than anybody in the world. Honestly, I think this line here is actually really revealing, and the show slowly starts to paint a picture of this sad, regretful father who is afraid that his best days are behind him. These aren't the only episodes in early South Park that feature Randy heavily, but they are the ones that sort of individualize him. He still does plenty of other weird, quirky stuff throughout this era of South Park, but honestly, for a huge chunk of the other episodes, it's the entire 
town that goes along with these weird quirky situations. Randy is often just a part of a bigger mob that's partaking in these strange events. Outrage about Chin Pokemon's effect on kids? Randy's there. Civil War reenactment? Randy. Becoming zombified by Ritalin? Randy's there too. He sort of leads the charge in leaving the church and becoming atheists, which a lot of people end up doing in this episode, and also starts shitting out of his mouth. <laughs> South Park embracing the metrosexual lifestyle? Oh, you know Randy's there. It's super fabulous. Would you like some Shiraz? He's at the forefront of the pro slash anti-war conflict and I'm a little bit country. He becomes obsessed with Walmart when the town builds one. He convinces the whole town to double down when they try to win South Park back from the casino. Stan, okay, you just don't understand the fine points of gambling. You're never supposed to stop when you're on a winning streak. There are honestly countless examples of Randy going along for the ride with the other citizens of South Park. A major aspect of the show has always been the town of South Park itself getting really caught up in ridiculous conflicts. And usually when Randy was a part of them, he was sort of just our window into the townspeople. He wasn't necessarily a standout. Like in A Little Bit Country, yeah, he's one at the forefront of the anti-war protests, but he's mostly just representing half of the town. There's nothing inherently Randy about his actions in the episode, he's just our access point into this side of the conflict. Though episodes like My Future Self and Me do start to show off some of Randy's quirks through some of these town-wide situations. And some episodes maybe put a tad more of a focus on Randy, even though it's a town-wide conflict. Like when the Walmart moves into town. Dad, you're a geologist. I'll make less money, sure, but as long as I buy everything at Walmart, It'll all even out. But overall, these early seasons of South Park primarily showcase Randy as a slightly more prominent South Park citizen, and not nearly as much as an individual. But in season nine, one episode would change that forever. I'm not allowed to stand up for myself. I thought this was America. Huh? Isn't this America? Episode 905, The Losing Edge, is, in my opinion, a perfect episode of South Park. I mean, I could go on for days about this episode. It balances a hilariously clever and subversive conflict for the kids with a gut-busting Randy-focused subplot, but for this video, let's just talk about how this episode completely shaped the future of Randy Marsh. In this episode, Randy becomes obsessed with getting drunk and fighting other dads at Stan's baseball games. In fact, it totally becomes its own sport for him. The pride that Randy feels for beating up these other dads is immeasurable. It's possibly the thing that he's most proud of accomplishing in his entire life. I worked hard, believed in myself, and now I'm gonna be fighting in the state championship game. I think this is actually a really natural evolution from what we've learned about Randy. Those fears that he talked about in the hot tub, his insecurities about life passing him by. This is seemingly the first instance of Randy embracing something new that is just for him. Something he is invested in that is completely his own, and an accomplishment no less. This also marks another important occasion, one of the first times that Sharon starts to get super fed up with Randy's bullshit, which would come into play later. Oh yeah, and on top of all this, the episode showcased that Randy is absolutely f***ing hilarious. You want a piece of me? Cause I'm pretty sick of your goddamn mouth! What do you want to do, huh? Look, Randy was funny before this, but by showcasing him in these elevated, drunken, ridiculous states, they were able to convey a performance for Randy that they hadn't before, and I think it unlocked something special for the show. Something they maybe didn't realize that they actually had until now. Randy is comedy gold, and from here on out, he became a much more prominent character on South Park. He was still used very often as our townspeople surrogate, so when the town is going through some weird fad or obsession, we would still often see that through Randy. Episodes like You Have Zero Friends saw him get really caught up in the Facebook fad. Well, so are you gonna add me as a friend? He had hilarious role in Night of the Living Homeless. Look, Glenn, we're safe. He's at the forefront of the celebrations when Obama becomes president. Yeah! Yeah, Obama! Change! It's it's change! He basically leads the town in their weird worshipping of the economy. Finger pointing gets us nowhere! Steve! And he took the nationwide queefing conflict to Congress. They also started giving Randy significant subplots in kid-centric stories. One of the most memorable is obviously Make Love Not Warcraft. The focus of this episode is the kids' struggles to play World of Warcraft, but they gave a substantial subplot to Randy trying to play the game as well. Randy, you're working on that sediment analysis? Not now, Nelson. I just joined a big party of night elves and we're gonna explore the Tower of Azora together. And this riffs pretty well on those insecurities that we've been seeing slowly surface for Randy as the show goes on. He he becomes more and more obsessive over seemingly trivial things, and oftentimes things that are loved by younger generations. Randy is initially confused by World of Warcraft, but quickly gives it a try for himself. Hey, he even saves the day before being killed in front of Stan. Ah, rah, ah. 
or even episodes like Fantastic Easter Special, where we find out that Randy is a part of the Hair Club for Men, a secret society that keeps the secret of Easter. With all the frills upon it, I'll be the grandest lady in the Easter parade. Side note, this is one of my favorite episodes of the whole show. The idea is hilariously randy, but it's also mostly just the inciting incident for Stan's big Easter adventure. They just start to utilize him in a more foundational supporting role, rather than just part of the town. But the biggest change after The Losing Edge was that we started to get episodes that were basically 100% randy episodes, and we would usually get at least a couple a season. Even the end of season nine throws Randy to the forefront of the show again in Bloody Mary, when Randy gets pulled over for drunk driving. What seems to be the officer problem? This episode actually deals with Randy's addictive personality, but it also does so in the most Randy way possible. When an AA meeting tells Randy that his alcoholism is a disease, Randy takes this, well, about as far as you'd expect Randy to take it. This disease is just eating me up! I HATE MY ILLNESS! After this, we see so many Randy-centric episodes that continue to elevate the Randyisms to a ridiculous degree. Season 11's Apologies to Jesse Jackson shows Randy... Well, we all know what Randy does in this episode. Just ludicrous stupidity, and his response to the controversy is equally ludicrous. Season 13's Pinewood Derby is another of my personal favorites, and this is basically just a Randy highlight factory. He's so desperate for Stan to win the Pinewood Derby that he steals a superconducting magnet from the Large Hadron Collider. Because of this, the car literally breaks warp speed, leading to first contact with alien life. But because of Randy's complete incompetence, he basically leads the human race down the exact wrong path. In the end, it turns out that the aliens were testing the human race to see if they were worthy of being a part of their intergalactic federation, and Randy's leadership gave them their answer, a resounding no way. Since you did not return the space cache, your species and your planet is hereby forever blocked off and barred from the rest of the universe. I mean, to be fair, the entire planet goes along with Randy's awful plan, so it's not all on him, but he did lead the way. In fact, Randy is shown to lead a lot of weird fads. Season 14's Medicinal Fried Chicken is a particularly egregious example of this. When a medical marijuana dispensary opens up in South Park, Randy literally gives himself cancer so that he can get high all the time. Can I show this? I don't know if I can even show this. I guess I'll do some blurring. But Randy also ends up convincing all of his friends in town to do the same thing. This is so funny, but it's another example of the lengths Randy would go to feed his addictive personality. And the show also goes to great lengths to explore the depths of Randy's insecurities. In the episode More Crap, Randy breaks the world record for largest dump ever taken. He instantly gets competitive about it, and he is so depressed when his record is beaten by Bono. Look, this is absolutely one of the most ridiculous episode premises in South Park history, but you cannot deny that it truly explores Randy on a substantial and meaningful level. I know that this late in my life I'll never come so close to finally having meaning. The longer the show continues, the more they explore Randy's regrets and his desires to leave some sort of lasting impact on the world, to have some sort of major success that gives his life the meaning he craves. This idea is also further explored in season 14's Cream Fraiche. <laughs> I can't say this title without laughing. This episode is where Randy becomes completely obsessed with the Food Network and becoming a celebrity chef. He even starts working at the school cafeteria. Today we're gonna be making the students my tasty baked ziti with basil and fresh mozzarella. Damn, remember Chef? I miss Chef. This episode ultimately gives an alternative explanation for Randy's Food Network obsession, but this again illustrates Randy's desire to be something more than what he already is. And this actually comes to a head in an incredible season 15 episode, You're Getting Old. This episode is genius, one of my favorites of the whole show, I know I've said that a bunch already. And Randy's story is very much secondary to Stan's, but it also says a lot about the state of South Park. Honestly, I think I might do a separate video on this episode and its place in South Park history, but for now let's focus on Randy. The episode is specifically about Randy's refusal to admit that life is passing him by. The kids are all into a new music genre called Tween Wave, which pointedly sounds like literal shit to Randy and all other adults. Oh, come on. That music sounds like shit. No, it's just young and hip, so you don't get it, Sharon. But Randy will not admit that he isn't hip to the new trends. He falsely claims that he actually loves the music, even though it's abundantly clear that it sounds like shit to him. In fact, he even tries to start performing his own tween wave music, thinking that this might be his chance to actually make it big as a musician. And the results are, well. I got a fever, but it's under control. 
This is not only hilarious, but it lines up so well with what we know about Randy and his history. Randy was in a boy band at age 18 and tasted success, but that success was short-lived. We learned in the Guitar Hero episode that Randy played guitar and had dreams of being a rock star that never panned out. And through so many of these episodes that we've talked about, Randy has desperately tried to capture some sort of new success in life. But Randy's antics finally catch up to him in his relationship with Sharon, who is just completely fed up with his behavior. And she cites all of these same things that we've been talking about as the reason for this. You do this all the time! First, you're obsessed with baseball fights. Then you need to play Warcraft. Then you gotta be a celebrity chef. The two of them argue until they actually get to the root of the issue. Because I'm unhappy, okay? I've been unhappy for a long time. Now this is definitely metatextual and has a lot to do with how Matt and Trey were feeling about the show itself at the time, which again, I'd really like to make a video about, but this also says a ton about Randy as a character. After all, in a lot of ways, Randy is a reflection of Matt and Trey themselves, so it all kind of ties together. The reason that Randy continues to become more bombastic and obsessive and journey down these ridiculous story paths is because he isn't happy with his life, something that has been really well established over the course of the show. This episode actually ends with Sharon and Randy getting divorced, and honestly, the montage set to Fleetwood Mac's landslide is really emotionally affecting. Okay, maybe the song is just emotionally affecting no matter what, but I love the sequence. And while this episode and its follow-up did sort of put out the idea that the show and its characters needed a change, and shouldn't just re-establish the status quo, they sort of throw that idea away for a quick joke. Get in the car, Stan! Your mom and I are moving back in together! What? We worked it out, pal! Surprise! Which is a really funny moment, admittedly. But even though it seemed like they were going to return back to the status quo, over the following eight seasons, the show really started to see some major changes. For a few seasons, Randy continues his ridiculous plans as expected. In Broadway Brodown, he becomes obsessed with Broadway musicals, even venturing to write one for himself, which is a little autobiographical for Matt and Trey. In season 16, Randy creates a football replacement sport called Sarcastaball and even becomes the head coach of the Denver Broncos. He buys a blockbuster video in the year 2012, thinking that it's his ticket to finally being successful. And some gifts for the kids too. After all, we're rich now. This turns into a full-blown Shining parody and Randy nearly kills his family, but it's also just another example of how desperate Randy is to find a new success in his life. In season 17, Randy becomes a mall security guard for Black Friday, initially just planning on using his position to get a better spot in line for Black Friday deals, but eventually becoming fully invested in the massive war that is holiday shopping. But in season 18, the show starts to try something new serialization, at least in small doses. This wasn't a fully serialized season, but there were aspects of each episode that continued to cross over through the entire thing. And for Randy in season 18, there was one thing that played out all season long. Yeah, 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 yeah. I am Lord, yeah, 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 Lord, Lord, come in, Lord, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right, for season 18, Randy was moonlighting as music sensation Lord, all while still working as a geologist. This is definitely Randy's biggest accomplishment, though it seems that it maybe didn't bring him all that much joy since he was sort of pretending to be someone else. In fact, in the middle of the season, he even takes a little break to pursue cock magic, apparently something that he used to do in college. This is another of my favorite episodes, you should go watch it if you haven't seen it. But it appears that Randy's career as Lord was short-lived, because in season 19, he's onto all kinds of new ventures. He joins a PC frat, he spearheads the attempts to gentrify parts of South Park so that they can get a Whole Foods. Yes, it's where the presidential candidate is from. No, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, soda soap out, soda soap out. We have a soda soap out the town is completely different. Interestingly, this was actually a pretty Randy light season and both seasons 20 and 21 are similar. For season 20, the first truly and fully serialized season, Randy's through line has a lot to do with his addiction to member berries, basically nostalgia fruit. It ultimately culminates in Randy being sort of zombified and possessed, but this lines up pretty effectively with the addictive tendencies we've seen from him over the entire show. Season 21 has a couple Randy focused episodes. He has a show called White People Renovating Houses. I do the construction and practice MMA in my spare time. He becomes really fixated on canceling Columbus Day, even though he previously was super obsessed with Christopher Columbus. You have to understand, it was 2013. Everyone was stoked on Columbus back then. Pretty standard Randy action. Hyper fixations coupled with ridiculous stupidity. It kind of seems like the show was just running through the motions with Randy after a stint as Lord, giving him a few episodes a year and having fun with him. But everything would change in season 22. And I moved on out to a Colorado farm. 
In season 22, Randy gets fed up with his life and the people of South Park, and he moves his family to the valley to become weed farmers. Some people take issue with this development, but it actually makes plenty of sense given what we know about Randy. We know he's been unhappy with his life and is constantly trying to fill that void with new careers and experiences. I mean, he's been a geologist, boy band member, Walmart employee, cafeteria chef, Broadway musical writer, coach of the Denver Broncos, mall security guard, owner of Blockbuster Video, music sensation lord, cock magician, host of white people renovating houses, and now, finally, a weed farmer. But this is also something that speaks to his addictive personality. I mean, he's been addicted to gambling, alcohol, heroin hero, weed, internet porn, member berries, crack, and weed again. Season 22 has a lot of fun with Tegrity Farms for this one episode, and then it sort of acts as a minor subplot slash throughline for the remainder of the season. Events take place there, like Man Bear Pig mauling Ned, but there isn't much of a focus on it story-wise until the season finale, Bike Parade. But this season finale, I think, is really important for Randy's development moving forward. Because of the Amazon strike, Randy starts getting a huge amount of traffic through Tegrity Farms. Like, probably the most success he's ever seen in his life, save for Lord, but we won't count that. And pretty quickly, this goes to Randy's head. He does end up helping the town take down Jeff Bezos by getting everyone stoned enough not to care about the Amazon strike, but chasing down the success leads directly into season 23, which is a different show entirely. And I mean that literally. The South Park theme song is nowhere to be found. completely replaced by the new Tegrity Farms title sequence. Randy Marsh was now, fully and officially, the star of South Park. The first six episodes of the season are literally episodes of Tegrity Farms, and Randy is the main character throughout. But the through line for these episodes is how through selling weed with quote unquote Tegrity, Randy starts to chase success and in the process, completely loses all Tegrity. In the first episode of Tegrity Farms, Randy literally bombs the home grow ops of South Park residents because they're taking away his business. In the second episode, he makes a deal with communist China who uses his weed to plant on protesters. This episode would actually get South Park banned in China. He starts selling plant-based burgers using his leftover product, claiming it's for the environment, but then proceeds to murder an entire herd of cattle because he doesn't know what to do with them. Tegrity Farms is about a man who has achieved success beyond his wildest dreams and completely loses sight of what is right and wrong in the process. The show focuses on Randy for the first six episodes of the season before airing the Tegrity Farms quote-unquote season finale. But then in South Park's actual season finale, the 10th episode of the season, they run back to Randy to ask for help to get the town in the Christmas spirit. And his solution to sell everyone weed that is caked in cocaine. That's Tegrity. He even does a line with Santa and Jesus. Okay, I get it, it's really clean. And this just continues into the pandemic special. We see Randy showcase probably the least Tegrity yet, revealing that when in China, Randy actually created the coronavirus. I I'm not gonna show you how though. I'm pretty sure I'll get demonetized. The entire special, he tries to fix the problem, but not because he feels remorse. It's simply because he doesn't wanna get caught. No damn Tegrity. The funniest thing about Randy and Tegrity Farms is how he's sort of being used to convey meta commentary to the audience from Matt and Trey. The general response to Tegrity Farms from the fan base has been, please go back to South Park. So basically, Matt and Trey say this in the show through Randy. You know, is it me, or are people starting to not be that stoked on Tegrity Farms? But they also sort of mock the fans about it in really funny ways. Did everyone enjoy the Halloween special? No, Randy, only you did. Oh, well, that was pretty much my target audience anyway. Even after the vaccination special, which in so many ways resets the show back to the status quo, they still make it clear that Randy isn't done with Tegrity Farms. And honestly, I'm pro Tegrity Farms. I know it's not everyone's favorite, but I'd rather the creators of the show have fun and find creative inspiration than try to force the show to be what it used to be. I don't want a soulless imitation of South Park's classic seasons. I want inspired stories that they're excited to tell. So for now, Randy Marsh is the owner and operator of Tegrity Farms, and he had a wild journey getting there. He started as a pretty simple father and geologist, we were slowly introduced to some funny quirks and obsessions, which then evolved into wild hyperfixations and career changes in the midst of a midlife crisis, and finally settled into a weed farmer with absolutely no Tegrity. If we looked at Randy in the first season and the most recent season, you probably wouldn't be able to tell it's the same character, but when you watch the series beginning to end, it couldn't have happened any other way. Hey folks, thanks so much for tuning in. Remember to check out the Cartoons That Curse podcast. If you like this video, let me know down in the comments and do all the liking and subscribing thing. And also let me know if there's any other South Park topics you want me to cover. Peace. Johnny! Two challenge.